He's brought that experience on. That's why he's hired these people here is specifically for that purpose. So I think that that needs to be stated. Having said that, we do have Priebus out here clarifying uh, what Mr. Trump is saying. Priebus, immigration order doesn't include green card holders, but anyone traveling to banned countries will be subjected to further screening. Now, the left is up in arms about this. They're absolutely furious. Let me ask you why. Look up death to America. You will find that people chant death to America in Iran in front of their leader who sanctions it and calls it a, uh, he calls it a cry of unity among the people. So if the people of America get in to go in the streets, and I'm, I'm not in favor of this, and start chanting death to Iran, is that not to be offensive to Iran? Is that just then a call to unity? Is that all that I didn't know? When you see your friend, do you say, hey, death to you? And death to you, nice to see you again. So of course we're gonna monitor people coming from that country, not because everybody from that country is a terrorist, but because those countries, that country, in this case, Iran, has specifically promised to bring death to you in front of their leader. Now Trump is a racist. Trump isn't a racist. But if he was, and he's not, but if he was, does he sanction people chanting go KKK in front of him? Because I haven't seen it. This is happening as a sanctioned event in Iran. Well, White House Chief of Staff makes me sick to say it. My name's Priebus, who cares only about the upper elite. Look at my own videos. He has uh, muddied the waters on President Trump's new executive order. No, he did not. Barring immigration from select countries Sunday, saying it doesn't include green card holders going forward. But adding that anyone traveling back and forth from countries in question will be subject to further screening. Look. That is not watering down the message. Trump's message has never been that we're going to ban Muslim countries. As a matter of fact, do you realize that I think it's 80 or 87 percent of Muslims in the world are not affected by this ban? They're not. There are a lot of countries like Jordan who have historically gone to war with the United, with I mean, with us to fight us, alongside us, I should say, bad wording, have gone to war alongside us. We are looking at specifically people that have meant us harm, and some of the people with green cards do fly into Yemen, so as to better be able to train. They do fly to Iran, and then they fly back over here. Not all of them. That's why we're vetting them with more security. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. That's just proven thought. If a number of people say that they're going to kill you, then you're probably going to be very caref careful on who it is that you allow into your house. In an interview on NBC's Meet the Press, Priebus was asked about reports that the executive order affected green card holders. Contrary to recommendations from the Department of Homeland Security, we don't. We didn't overrule the State Department security as far as green card holders moving forward. It doesn't affect them. So left, please quit saying that. Look, I even highlighted for you. Doesn't affect them. But when pressed by host Chuck Todd on whether it impacts green card holders, green card holders. Priebus, he did not reverse himself, saying it does if you're traveling back and forth, you're going to be subjected to further screening. What he meant, as you can tell this is NBC News, they're trying to spin this against him here, and I'm not a big Priebus fan, but that's not what he said. You can even read his own words, I just read them to you. He's clarifying an implemented procedure that is new. It's not affecting their travel. It will affect them coming back into the country when they're going to get added questions. Things like, would you like to blow up innocent American children? Do you think that death to America is a cry of unity? It seemed to me to be prudent questions. Because when they say death to America, <clears throat> they're not saying death to Sam's enemies, death to everybody Sam doesn't like. They're saying death to Sam and his enemies. When they're chanting death to America, they're not saying death to Sam. They're saying death to you, too. And you. That's why it matters. So getting this clear, 
And like Krauthammer said uh, on Fox, Trump has not done the greatest job of implementation. He really hasn't. He should have made this clearer before he did it. But it was important to get it done quickly, and I understand why. Asked whether the executive order would affect U.S. citizens, he again indicated it would, suggesting it was up to the discretionary authority of the Customs Border Control. Well, look, that's always been the case. That's not something that's changed. I don't know if many people realize this. But Obama bombed five of the countries that are on the list of seven that are to be limited in the ban from travel. Okay? Trump is allowing them to live in their hellhole and kill each other if they wish. As long as they don't bother anybody outside of their own borders. We'll just forget it. We'll leave you there if that's what you want to do. It's what you've done for thousands of years. <clears throat> America's already tried coming over to help you. You can't be helped, so we're leaving. And we're going to leave you there in that hellhole that you're so happy with. You want to chant death to us in the streets? Then you can stay in your hellhole. We don't care. I have a very good friend of mine who was so unbelievably wrong in matters of political instance, and she was saying that this was more immoral than what Obama did. So Obama bombing them and killing more innocents than Bush is more immoral than simply not allowing them to come into the United States so we don't have to worry about it anymore. Sure. I'd rather be bombed than not allowed to go to Iran. It would be much more moral just to bomb me. What? I don't even understand how the left's head works. <clears throat> I would suspect that if you're an American citizen traveling back and forth to Libya, you'll likely be subjected to further questioning when you come into an airport, he said. He also suggest, suggested that the executive order could come to encompass more than the current, and I, I'm hoping it does, more than the current countries, which of course is Iraq, Syria, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Yemen, all places that want to kill us. I'll tell you why I think it's a wonderful idea. Because you, if you open your borders up the way that the left wants us to do, you're going to end up in a horrible mess. If I go to Yemen or Somalia, I just expect that when I get back into the country, <clears throat> they're going to say, Mr. DeGangio. Well, they're going to pronounce it wrong. Mr. DeGangi, what were you doing going back and forth to Iran? Now, you have a Fourth Amendment right not to be questioned within the United States without probable cause and a warrant. You don't have that right when you're traveling to terrorist countries outside of the country. And that's very important. So they are allowed to ask you these questions. It's not a brief breach of the Fourth Amendment when you're coming from a terrorist state. <clears throat> that, that, again, that the, that the leaders sanction the terror. The terror that you have in Egypt isn't sanctioned by Egypt. The Egyptian government has gone out of their way to fight arm in arm with America to protect their important heritage. So, when a country is openly sanctioning terrorism, then they're going to say, Mr. DeGangi, what were you doing in Iran? And I will show them the video on my cheap camera that I'd like to get a better one with, if you could fund me. Correct views of Hotmail.com, free plug for myself. Um, I'll show them my trusty camera, and I'll pull out my trusty data card, and they'll see the footage I got, and they'll let me into the country. If I don't want to do that, then it might be very good for me not to come to Iran. Just a hunch. No, just a hunch. If you've got business there, then you've got nothing to hide. And that is not the same argument that the left used about the Fourth Amendment. Well, if you've got nothing to hide, then why are you worried about the police checking you out? Because it's a Fourth Amendment right, God given to you in this country. It is not your Fourth Amendment right to travel to terrorist states when we don't know for what reason. Uh, Breitbart.com. White House, this is the, my favorite thing, maybe, that Trump has done so far, except getting us out of the TPP. Whitehouse.gov takes down the climate page, puts up America First Energy Plan. This makes me happier than a pig with a lifetime supply of shiznit. It really, really does. Observers on Twitter noted for the Friday's date of the 20th afternoon that the White House's page on climate change, a creation of the Obama administration, appears, no, it is 
taken down shortly after Donald Trump assumed the nation's presidency. One of the first things he did was take down the known lie of global warming. That's why I voted for him. That's my president right there. In its steed, the new White House published an explanation of what the Trump teams is calling the America's first energy pan plan. Thank God. Drill, baby, drill. At press time, the link to the White House page publicizing a plan to combat climate change leads to a blank page. It's because it's fake news. Look up Climate Gate. Look up Lord Monckton. A cached version of the page shows that President Obama's administration had used it to advertise a plan to reduce America's carbon footprint and save America and have America participate in a global effort to combat climate change. Again, like, like Alex Jones has said, remember, whenever you see a sentence like that, like right here, it really means a global effort to combat the Easter Bunny or the Tooth Fairy because there is no climate change. The Easter Bunny is far more real. <clears throat> there is no climate change. Look up the last show uh, where I talk about how the ice caps haven't shrunk since at all. I mean, not since. Or, I mean, at all. They can lay them over known images of what it looked like 100 years ago, and it didn't change. And they know it by the way that the uh, travelers moved and why they moved according to their own logs. They moved on the outskirts of the ice as close as they could get safely. And so we know where the ice caps have always been and what their borders have been and their their, their uh, beaches, for lack of better words, have been coasts. And uh, guess what? Same size it's always been. Not warming, not shrinking. For the sake of our children. Whenever you hear for the children, you of course, you know it means screw the adults. For the sake of our children and future generations, we must act now, the page read. And we are. This is an excuse to tax you into oblivion, and Trump, being the prudent man that he is, has taken the lie down. Screw you, Agenda 21. The Trump administration has instead published a much better page that lays out its energy plan. The Trump administration is committed to energy policies that lower costs for hardworking Americans and maximize the use of American resources. That means drilling into the ground and getting the energy safely without a spill out. Freeing us from dependence on foreign oil. People that are chanting death to us in the streets will no longer be responsible for making our cars run and our houses warm. The page addresses finding economically viable energy solutions that are mindful of the environment. So he is not, is not, is not, is not, is not going to hurt the environment. Our need for energy must go hand in hand with responsible stewardship. He's going to hurt the environment. Responsible stewardship, dumbass, of the environment. Protecting clean air and clean water, conserving of natural inhabitants, habitats, excuse me, and preserving our natural resources and reserves will remain a high priority. That's what clean coal is about. That's why the word clean comes before the word coal. Please try to pay attention. President Trump will focus the EPA on its essential mission of protecting our air and water. That is the most amazing, wonderful, blessed news I think I've ever heard. Thank you, Mr. Trump, for being somebody who is on, side, on the side of reason and intelligence. So moving on, guns. Guns kill people. Guns. Get rid of the guns. Armed citizen who threw a wallet to a distracted suspect. That's when I lit him up. Now, see, that man right there. He must have been a racist because he carried a gun, right? He must have been a racist. But oh, wait a minute. That's a black guy who defended himself and innocent life. You know why? Because despite what the left link wants you to believe, that is not a black guy. That is an American citizen who used his God-given Second Amendment right to save his life and the lives of other American citizens who may have been black. An armed citizen, writes Awar Hawkins, who was in Detroit ENS carryout shrimp shack during an alleged robbery, says he threw his wallet on the floor, and when the robbery suspect looked away to retrieve it, the citizen shot him. It occurred at 545 January 21st. According to clickindetroit.com, an armed citizen is a concealed carry permit holder 
going only by the name of Dennis, the type of that, to protect his privacy. He was at the shrimp shack with his girlfriend. So in other words, gun, gun owners like to brag about it. Now he wants his privacy. He's not happy. He was there with his girlfriend, Latanya, <clears throat> when an alleged armed robbery suspect came in and ordered everyone to hand over their cash. Dennis and his girlfriend and another customer started throwing their money and wallets on the floor. The suspect allegedly pointed his gun at Latanya's face, so now his girlfriend was being threatened by a thug with a gun. Yes, I said thug but was distracted by the wallets on the floor and looked away to pick them up. Dennis used the brief distraction as an opportunity to draw his own gun and shoot the suspect in the stomach. Dennis said, when I saw he had the gun in her face, that's his girlfriend's face, and I threw my money down and keys, he turned to look to get the money, and that's when I lit him up, he said. Kicked the robber's gun away and tended to the wounded until the first responders arrived. Now listen to this. He shot the man, and this uncaring guy, who just loved killing people, even though he's not bragging about it and changed his name, is out there tending to the man that he just shot. Does this give you some kind of an insight as to what gun owners are really like? We saw the same thing with the little boy that had to shoot the guy in his house. Following the incident, Dennis made clear that he did not have a specific plan to distract the suspect, but that he took advantage of the situation when the distraction occurred, which is what they train you to do when you get your permit. That's why there's training. He added, even though you give them everything, they'll still shoot you, and I wasn't going out like that. Good for him. WWJ reports that Detroit police said Dennis will face no charges for his actions. He acted in self-defense. Very, very good to see. Because you know what? Detroit's not a place that's going to be sending you police officers to rescue you at any time soon. Now, they got their own problems since uh, the left has destroyed the state and the city. And you can tell this because the left has been destroying the city, running the city during the entire time that it's been dying. Friends, the day the lights went out right there, Amazon.com. Make sure you check it out. Uh, go buy the book. It's by D. Allen Ross. And it's really funny. It's hard to make funny in a book. A lot of times it comes out as contrived or forced. Well, that's not the case here. This is very, very good, and you're going to want to read it. Starbucks pledges to hire 10,000 refugees. This is from CNN.com. Uh, Christelle has been addicted to this story, but I'll tell you one thing about it. <clears throat> What's not mentioned here is, is as much as it needs to be is that this made the stock of Starbucks plummet. Now, is this because we absolutely hate people of Muslim religions? Or is it because we don't want Starbucks encouraging a Muslim problem? A radical Muslim problem, you'll argue? Yes, I'm not talking about regular Muslims. Okay, we don't have a Christian problem in the country. We have a small problem with a handful of idiot Christians that want to blow up abortion clinics. Okay, maybe we don't have an Islamic problem, but we certainly have a radical Islamic problem. We don't need Starbucks hiring people and encouraging the migration of people that they don't even know when there's other people in countries that need the work. America is having one of the greatest economic downturns in its entire history. Why don't you hire 10,000 Americans? Or at least pepper it up. Or better yet, instead of trying to get good press with ended up bad press, if you really want to hire 10,000 refugees, then why don't you hire the 10,000 refugees without tooting your horn and telling everybody how good you are? The only time I talk about the charities that I donate to, and I don't donate as much as I should, um, is to, to let you know that I, I specifically support them when they come up in a news broadcast or when they come up in something that I'm already talking about. I'm not going to come out here and tell you how wonderful I am because I donate a little bit of money to who would work. Why doesn't Starbucks just do it? Just do it. If you're going to do it, do it. Why do you have to let everybody know you did it? Because it's not about the environment or any of your leftist causes. It's about you looking holier than now. And that's why people are getting really, really sick of you. And they're starting to look at things like the Coffee Caribou, free plug, and uh, Seattle's Best Coffee that are starting to open up shops now because we're sick of you. It's not that your coffee is bad, it's that you are. 
Starbucks says it plans to hire 10,000 refugees over five years in 75 countries where it does business. But of course they had to announce it so that you could kiss their butt for it. Chairman and CEO who wants his butt kissed, Howard Schultz, outlined the company's plan in a memo and is sent to employees Sunday in response to Trump's executive order banning travel from seven Muslim majority countries. We are living in an unprecedented time. Yeah, it's called a time of terror, Schultz wrote in the memo which listed several actions the company says it's looking to reinforce our belief in our partners around the world. And we're looking at ways to get our stores bombed and the innocent people drinking coffee killed. But Sam, that's against Muslims. You can't say something like that. It's not against Muslims. You know why? Because in a lot of Muslim nations where Starbucks does business, it's only other Muslims that they're going to be blowing up. So please don't imply that I'm somehow against Muslims. There probably aren't going to be any Christians, Hindus, or uh, raw worshippers in most of the places they're going to bomb. So please stop with your whining already. Schultz also reiterated that Starbucks uh, support the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program, or DACA, which helps undocumented immigrants who are brought to the United States as children get driver's license. Yeah, of course, that way they can grow up and vote for leftist causes in states that allow driver's licenses to vote. And leftist causes can keep uh, making you sound as if you're holy, which leads to you getting your butt kissed. It's all about your ego. They're going to focus on people who serve with U.S. troops as interpreters and support personnel. Fred, <clears throat> we do not have 10,000 people helping U.S. In, with uh, interpreters and supporting the personnel. Look, I'm not against helping people. I'm really not. But here's what I am against. <clears throat> I'm against pandering, and I'm against helping people with an agenda. If you're going to help somebody, help somebody. Okay? If I meet a refugee and they're moving into the country, you know what? If they got the rent, I'm going to rent them the property I have. Actually, the property that I have is probably, be probably better off being homeless. But just the same, if they wanted it, I would do my best. You know what I wouldn't do? I wouldn't take out an ad in the paper telling everybody how great I was to do it, so please tune in. <clears throat> I would mention it if it came up. Just like I have mentioned by name, uh, black friends that I have, when it's come up. I'm not one of those people that use my black friends to prove I'm not racist. I don't need to prove I'm not racist. I know that I'm not racist. Uh, Daily Mail, Dancing with the Devil, inside the Los Angeles Satanic Temple's biggest ever black mass, January 18th. Friends. We just covered the exorcisms and the uh, the people that wrote the exorcist. The guy saying that he was pushed, that the priest saying that he was pushed down the stairs by an unseen hand. Um, I doubt that the last thing that the priest did before he died was lie about something. I don't know what his motive would have been for that. He was clear-headed at the time and was talking about a prior something prior. It wasn't due to a head injury. I don't imagine somebody with no history of lying would deliberately lie on their deathbed before they go to meet their maker, regardless of what religion they are. I'm pretty sure even atheists would agree with me on that. <clears throat> if you, if someone believes in God, even if you don't, they're not going to lie. And yet, obviously, he believed in God if he spent his whole life towards it. He didn't spend his whole life towards something so that he could lie about something he didn't know was going to happen on his deathbed. So think about this. Satanism is getting a real hold in this country, and I am in favor of uh, open religions. I am. I'm a fan of Slayer. I'm a fan of death metal. Uh, in some instances, black metal. I can't tell what they're barking about. I simply like the drums and guitars. But this matters <clears throat> when people start embracing it and realize and start to take it out of context here. Yes, some people in the heavy metal community are really into this. That's why they've infiltrated the hip-hop community. But there's a line between theater and reality. Now, you can argue that it's not theater for you, that Satanism is the way you want to go, in which case you would have to ask yourself what is wrong with you. Satan, according to every manuscript, I'm familiar with the one in the Christian Bible, but I promise you that this is fact. Look up the Hindu religions. Look up the Quran. Hold your nose. I'm kidding. Um, talk to Native American Indians. <clears throat> talk to people of the ancient Korean religions. They all tell the same story. Okay? They all tell the same story about the devil presenting himself to someone. God allowing the devil 
to do anything he wants. That means if the devil, God forbid, was to walk into this room, he could say, Sam, what do you want? And I will give it to you. That's what people think the devil does. That's what the devil says he does. But of course, he's the father of lies. You can't trust a liar. What does mankind of all cultures, without having met each other prior, we're talking about ancient days, before man had traveled continents, what were they saying about the devil, about evil? Well, they were saying that he comes to you, offers you a great number of things, <clears throat> and when God allows him to do whatever he wants, he chooses to destroy you. He didn't choose to make you great. He didn't choose to make you rich. When God said you may do whatever you want, rather than use his influence to try to win you over in some evil, nefarious way, <clears throat> he gives you diseases that can't be cured. He gives you boils. He kills your wife. He kills your family. He takes your land and destroys your home to get you to curse God. That's what the devil does when he is allowed to do whatever it is that he wants. The only time he's giving you anything is when he's also doing it as an affront to God, and it's going to lead to further abuses in the future. Now, if you don't believe in any religion at all, then you don't have to believe anything I just said. But if you're a Satanist and you do believe in the devil, then well, I think what I just said to you is going to prove as a wake-up call to you, because we both believe in your God. Dancing with the devil inside the Los Angeles Satanic Temple's biggest ever black mass, with bloodletting, demonic cats, tattoos, and destruction rituals, well, not all tattoos are satanic. I don't have an evil keyboard on my hand, but we'll go with it. The Satanic Temple of L.A., a chapter of the nationwide satanic organization, which does have a right to exist, hosted a massive black mass Saturday night, complete with the living bloodletting ritual and a 45-minute lecture about demonic cats. Well, at least one demonic cat didn't get into the White House, so we do have that on our side. Um, guests could also attend the destruction ritual and an invocation ritual both with live music again destruction ritual not a a night of 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 renewed hope and not a night of satanists getting what god wouldn't give them god didn't give me this god didn't give me that sort satan is no a celebration a destruction ritual well, if you don't have what you want anyway, then why do you care if God's going to destroy it? You're simply rooting for the guy that's already destroying it. You're an idiot. I don't, it's, the devil is the right way. Let's destroy. I thought Satanists were the ones that said God didn't do enough, remember? Wasn't it the Satanists that say I'm a Satanist because the Christian God is terrible? He allows cancer to destroy he allows this to happen and that to happen. Okay. So you're going to a destruction ceremony, that which, you know, that's going to make everything so much better for everyone, right? Why, right, sure. It's headquartered in Salem, Massachusetts. It has 24 chapters across the U.S. Members of the movement, which calls itself an organized religion, do not believe in a personal Satan, but say they preach rationalism and reject superstition. Okay, if that's the kind of Satanism they're in, then is it rational for them to want to destroy everything, but not rational for some people to get cancer? They want to destroy everything. They want to celebrate the destruction of everything, so whatever is left can build it all up from nothing. We've already been built up from nothing once, and this is what we've done. So why don't you try to solve the problems that are here Instead of starting all over again and ending up with the same problem and probably deciding that you want to destroy everything again. You people are pointless. Okay, you people are utterly pointless. You're no help to anyone. You've just thrown the towel in and decided to worship evil. You're causing more harm than the Christians that you claim that you're against. And I am a Christian, but I know what you mean. A lot of Christians do a lot of harm, but you guys are doing a lot more harm. And you're stupid. I'm sorry, there's no other word for it. You're simply stupid. VIP tickets to Saturday's massive rally cost $66.60, while other guests paid $15. Attendees, many of which wore costume, were pictured by LAS enjoying six hours of satanic activities. Yeah, other guests paid $15 because there was a shortage of Satanists that had the $66 and a shortage of people that actually wanted the money to do it. Now, look, she doesn't offend me. It doesn't bother me at all. I've gone to sex parties before that are not exactly Christian events. 
But you know what I didn't do? I didn't worship someone who was bringing about the destruction of everything that I care about. These people don't realize destruction parties mean the destruction of your families, of your animals, of your grandmother, of your mother, a destruction of your future, a destruction of what you could be, of what you could become. And if you support that, then you're an idiot. You should support me instead. Because I'm bringing you the dumbie of the day. Oh, yes. It brings us to the dumbie of the day. What is the dumbie of the day? Well, we take the dumbest story of the day. And we go ahead and highlight it, saving only the truest dumbies for the dumb dunce cap of the month which will most likely be monday or tuesday fukushima will be the next show snoop dog has gotten more dunce dumbies of the day on this show than carter has had liver pills uh snoop dog blasts uncle tom blacks artists who are performing at trump or who did perform now at trump's inauguration now i was going to give him the dumby of the day like i the dunce cap of the month uh he's come out against guns when he's made his entire money talking about the illegal use of guns Maybe if people used guns legally, Snoop, we wouldn't have such a problem. But then again, they wouldn't be your fans. Uh, we're talking about a man who doesn't have the intelligence to rhyme or to put sentences together, who simply makes up his own words for shizzle because he can't find any real words that rhyme. He doesn't have enough intelligence. Now he is insulting those who are black, who support Trump. Because we, we talked about earlier, when you're a leftist, you can't be an American. You have to be a white American or a black American. You've got to be a woman or a man. You've got to be at least confused about the two. You can't just be an American. You can't. Rapper and co-star of the television series Martha and Snoop's Dinner Party, which has to be as dull as watching tree bark fall, Snoop Dogg posted a video daring artist he calls Uncle Tom asked niggas to perform at Donald Trump's inauguration. Now let me ask you a question. How do you think the marching band that has played at every single marching event, they have a, they, they have a, a rich reputation, a rich history of playing on inaugural bar, ball, balls, if I can talk. I can't say the word balls. That doesn't speak well for me, does it? Um, <laughs> you've got Snoop Dogg out here condemning people that maybe they were in that marching band. Maybe they were really excited about that. Hey, Mom, I'm going to be flown to Washington, D.C. And those racist Trump supporters, you know what they did? They paid for an all-black band to be able to perform there. So maybe now we got two bands that we know that black people are in, because they can't just be people, of course. They're, what do you think they were saying at home? Hey, Mom, I'm going to get to go to Washington and play for the new president. Some of the first music he hears is going to be music that comes out of my instrument. And maybe I don't like the man, but I'm going to be able to look him in the eye. And I'm going to have myself seen. And I'm going to be proud of this day. And then maybe their favorite artist, maybe someone they really like, like Snoop Dogg, comes out. Calls him an Uncle Tom, which is a black term for those that don't know. Uh, blacks use against other blacks that work with whites. Because we can't be people, we can only be whites, because you're racist. What do, you th what do you think that made them feel like when they were marching? Their favorite artist, who they look up for, just called them an Uncle Tom. Because they went ahead and supported him. Or at least wanted to have a chance to go to nation's capital and play for the man. You're scum, Snoop Dogg. You've had a chance to play for anybody you've wanted, whenever you've wanted. And you have tainted these people's experience, if they happen to be foolish enough to look up to you. You've tainted their experience. Maybe that's what they get for being dumb enough to look up to you. And maybe if they're a little bit smarter than the average Snoop Dogg fan, they won't look up to you anymore. You've ruined it for them, Snoop. Way to go. So ain't nobody going to perform for Donald Trump, huh? A Californ the California rapper asked in a video posted online, which one of you jigaboo-ass niggas is going to come to be first one to do it? Wait, I'm going to roast the F out of one of you, you Uncle Tom-ass niggas for doing it. Way to go. Go ahead, Snoop. Go ahead and let's hear you roast the 15, 16, 18-year-olds that were in the parade marching. Let's hear you roast them and criticize how they played. Or are you just jealous because all of your music is sampled and you don't have anybody playing in it? 
You're scum, Snoop. You're scum. Friends, you've listened to the correct views. I'm keeping you abreast on all of the news. Do me a favor. Donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. Look me up at the Conservative Daily Post. Blasting news. Of course, the media speaks. And uh, good night, friends. God bless. Don't forget, Snoop Dogg, you're scum. <laughs>